What's up, everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk, and you might be saying to yourself, Hey, wait a second, what are we doing in the gem mines? And, well, the reason for that is, we will find ourselves in here so that we can double-check this little location here that I forgot to check earlier. But it does seem that Murius, the bandit chief, escaped via a boat that was waiting here. This pool of water looks like it goes on a long way, down a tunnel probably leading outside. And this is another location where, similarly to Lake Quirr, theoretically, one might assume that we could put on Aqualung and perhaps jump down here. Unfortunately, it is not possible, though. It looks a lot like it. However, cannot be done. And the other thing is, as I was um, working our way through here, I was thinking, you know, it might make sense for us to chat it up with some of our friends who we forgot to talk to when we were in the gem mines earlier, so let's see if they have anything in particular to say about this location. I feel a strange sensation in this place. More than mere bandits. I cannot say any more right now, but be on your guard, Mardek. Heard a lot about people sensing powerful magic signatures in this area, including Rohan. I never really noticed back when we were in here before just how beautiful these crystals are. There you have it. Emila? It was terrible when I had to explore this place with Steely. He doesn't listen to anyone but himself. Everything is always up to him. He's always right. I mean, um, was. Past tense. Um, I'd much rather have been traveling through here with you two. You're actually really nice and understanding. There aren't enough good guys like you in the world. Well, thanks, Emla. <laughs> Dugan's, Dugan's feeling it. <laughs> yeah, we're really nice guys. All right, Barney. <laughs> it's all right. And as for Zack... Won't you talk to me? No. Oh. Not much change in there. Okay, so, the other thing that we can do here is, if we were to try to make our way back to Canonia or the Canonia Woods, then we would have to work our way back through the mines and, of course, fight our way through. And I did that a little bit on our way to that room there and picked up a little bit of some experience on our skills. And so you'll see that some of them are a little further along than when we last left off. We have now mastered Stone Plosion with Emila. Except we don't really uh, need to use it, given how it is now mastered, and this enemy does have a boatload of magic defense, so therefore Emla, under these circumstances, actually deals more damage with their normal attack. Similarly, we'll take another look at other skills that we may have mastered in the meantime. However, we can also expedite this process and Phage Crystal, which is another crafting material that we get from these guys. We can expedite this process of relocating ourselves by going over to Marduk, and he has an active skill that we have not yet used, that being Warp, which basically can take us to the map and make it so that we can teleport to at least the start of any location. If we wanted to beam ourselves back up to Canonia, then we can make that happen. And I was also hearing you guys say that the people in this inn, this pub, will actually have different things to say after we have picked up Zack and left and come back. We also, I'm pretty sure, just didn't talk to the barkeep. I can't be bothered serving you now. Get out of my bleeding face. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, since we didn't talk to him earlier, if that is in reaction to having acquired Zack, Zack's services. Hey, I just noticed the other day that girls have, like, weird things on their chests. It's weird. I don't know what they are, but I wish I had some. But I don't. I wish Whoa, Cloak. It's okay, man. It's okay. Will there ever be a hero as great as Social Fox was? Will you be him, little soldier man? I bet you'll try to be. You'll see you seem like that sort of guy. What with your minions following in your footsteps all literally like? I mean, I suppose he's not wrong. We're all blokes here! We all do things that guys do. We talk about birds and chicks and violence and how tough we are and the sport and whatever the equivalent of cars is in this weird fantasy-esque world. Yeah! I wish there were some hot girls in here. 
I'm sick of oogling these men. I thought I might be gay, but I'm not. How annoying. I don't know. Fine, dude. When that, crack, when that guy grows up, he wants to be a gruel. As in, the monster? When I grow up, I want to be a gruel. Okay. Uh, apparently. Apparently he wants to be a monster. The other thing is, I believe we also may have walked into this building here. Oh no, definitely talk to everyone in there. I'm not sure we actually talked to, to, talk to the people in here. We might have gone in here and gotten distracted by having recently picked up Zach. A monster came into our house yesterday and ate all of our tables and chairs. Then we had to buy new ones. It also ate our son, probably. He's dead now. That's what happens when you live in the world. People die. It's annoying. I don't like soldiers. I'm old. Hey, my back's not what it used to be. Well, why are you telling me this? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Solak is the deity of the sun and the stars, the glowing ball of fire in the sky that provides warmth and life. Though Solak did not create Belkon, it is said to have created the sun. Well, as for whether that is the one true deity or Yalortism is, I don't know. That's a touchy subject. Let's not go there. And now... Let's head into the Canonia Woods, as we started to do last time around. However, now we'll actually get the chance to explore, and let's talk to some friends to see what they have to say about this area, because I think we want to get into the habit of doing that every time we go into a location so that we don't forget and have to double back like we did earlier. Yes, Marta? You wish to speak to me? I'm afraid I have nothing to say to you right now. And in some instances, if we're jumping the gun a little bit, either people don't have anything to say about a given location, or... It hasn't been long enough in between individual chats, then they might say something like that. Sorry, but can we hurry up in here? There are these strange burr things that keep getting caught in my pants. And some kind of pollen floating around in the air that's irritating my- uh, 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 Sorry. It's okay, dude. No worries. What about Emma? Ah, uh, this place is so earthy. I don't like her. I'm weak against it. So you don't like me? Well, um, that's different. All right. And I mean, we can probably guess what's gonna happen here, but we can give it a shot. Zach? Yeah, he still doesn't want to talk to us. So mysterious. Okay, but as we're making our way through here, let's take a look at the map and we'll find, as we were alluding to before, very large location. Plenty of chests for us to track down, including, I believe, one that we will find over here hidden somewhere. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of this one, though. Is there anything in this corner? Oh, yes, there is. It's up here. Some potions, and we'll give some to Zach, because he's a little under-potioned at the moment. I haven't had to use any at this point, I don't think. Oh, and I was talking earlier about how I did master, or at least get a lot more experience on some of our skills. We'll take a look at that after this fight. We have a new version of the bees, the blade bees this time, which hit a little bit harder, and our air elemental. Let's take a look at them. They are still very quick. They're weak to fire, however, because they are now air elemental, and fire is the weakness of air elementals. They're a little bit, um, they have a little bit of air resistance, however, they actually still have primarily earth resistance. And so, Zach, we can use Berserk. I've gotten the chance to use that a little bit as I was going through the gem mines there, so he is that almost mastered. And then I think that Bubble is actually the most effective skill that Enlo will have here. Could try attacking everyone with it. Not quite enough. They don't have any weakness to Water Elemental. It's just uh, you know, no resistance or no weakness to it, so the normal amount of damage and therefore not quite enough to finish them off. And Dugan, unfortunately, the Earth Slash, not going to do too much against these enemies here. Let's try to deliberately target the one with the most HP. Take that one out. 
As for Marduk, similarly, we picked up the Magic Shield ability recently. We've gotten the chance to level that up, or experience that up a little bit. If that's... Well, I guess that's maybe. You know what I mean. Use the ability, get closer to mastering it. So these guys whoop, can still poison and zack when he's preserved. Remember, does just attack on his own with increased damage, but we have no control over him. So, again, I suppose we'll do the follow -up. Should finish this guy off. That we do. Dugan did get poisoned there. We should still have plenty of antidotes remaining. So, let's take a look in our inventory. That we do. So we'll drop a quick antidote for Dugan, and as we're on this page, this is a good time to double check what the status of our various skills might be. Mardek on the sword, doing okay. He has mastered minus 10% damage on this shield. This could potentially be something we swap out here. Let's throw it in here for the time being as a little bit of a reminder. Leatherhelm doesn't have any skills here, so, um, you know, no reason to take it off for the time being. Chainmail, he has also mastered the 20% damage reduction reaction. Magic Shield, he's still working on that. He does not have a plus 10% MP passive skill currently being used, it does not seem. That might be worth doing for the time being. It would require that we unallocate Insomnia, which is the immunity to sleep that we picked up from having the Cog Necklace that we picked up back in Marduk 1. But at least for the time being, to give him the chance to start mastering plus 10% MP. That seems like that could still be worthwhile. And the Silver Pendant we're still holding on to for that additional magic defense and light resistance. Not bad there. So we could potentially also swap out his Chainmail, if that is of interest. We'll keep an eye out for that. Let's look at Dugan, because I think he has a little bit more going on skill-wise. He has mastered Earth Slash, so theoretically, if we were to find a new two-handed sword for him, we could swap that out. Also using the Leather Helmet. He is currently on the Bandit Leather, which is that strong uh, leather chest plate that has a couple of useful skills on it, both the defensive evasion reaction, which is something that we would like to get on everyone else, because everyone else can use this, including Emla, because it is only a light armor. Also the plus one agility, not bad, and he has mastered that too. It does give earth and paralysis resistance and plus two agility, which could be also quite helpful. So let's take this off and we'll swap the normal chainmail back in and we'll see who the best candidate is for taking this off Dugan's hands. Then also the Ring of Strength is pretty straightforward, no skills there. However, if we look at the pickaxe pendant, see it does have that 10 damage soak, which was something we were hoping to get on someone else as well. That also looks like that's a candidate. Swap onto someone else. And we'll throw in the, the copper ring to give Dugan one defense to replace that for the time being. Let's take a look at Emila. Offensively, she's mastered both the stone explosion and the magic with uh, or magic attack with poison offensive reaction as well. So we could theoretically swap out the earth rod for something else if that was of interest. And given now we are going into a very earthy area, as Emila was saying before. It might make sense to try to focus a little bit more on some other elements. And then, I mean, it does empower Earth, and therefore that's not doing a lot for us, at least as of right now. However... Oh, and I mean, that could mean... Could even mean swapping the Water Rod for the time being might be a little bit beneficial. Assuming we're going to be doing, well, probably mostly air elemental, the lightning bolts, because that is the element that is strongest against Earth, and we're expecting to run into a bunch of Earth enemies, then ideally we would have a air-themed rod. However, we do not yet. Bronze Shield, she has mastered the 10 Soak defensive reaction, so that means she does not really need that pickaxe pendant that Dugan was using. There's some question as to whether that might be something worthwhile for her. However, since she's mastered this, I think that does mean that swapping it over to Mardek, he has also mastered it, but... Okay, then I suppose it's just a matter of who we would prefer to have that. It is the stronger of our two shields, defensively, and Emla is a little squishier, and both from a life standpoint and from a defensive standpoint. But for that reason, I think it does make sense to put that on her so that she can stay up a little more. Because she's been doing a fantastic job dealing the damage. The problem is, when she does get hit, she can get knocked down 
pretty easily, so we want to be mindful of that. She has not had the opportunity to use much of her defensive magic reactions here, her mage robes. So that means it's... I mean, ideally, she would master that before we swap over, so giving her a different chest plate. Similarly, the fire pendant. And she is currently using the cog necklace, however, she has mastered that. The insomnia ability that uh, Marduk also has, so that might be reason. Swap these things around here, give Emla a little bit more of the physical defense, and give Hugin the opportunity to start mastering the insomnia ability. So we'll go to the skills screen after this, probably. And then, as for Zack, he has many skills on his weapon right now, the Shashik. Close to mastering Berserk, also the offensive plus 20% damage reaction, and Soul Strike. Which, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit closer. I don't remember if we've done that just yet, but that is a cool skill. And then also on his chest plate, he has some good stuff there as well. Minus 20% damage, the 20 damage soak, which I think this might be the only way to get that on Emila. And possibly even, well, possibly even Dugan. Because uh, they do not have access, or at least Emila does not have access to any of the stronger armors. If now she can only use light armor. And then Zack is also just using a ring of agility and a ring of strength, neither one of which has any skills for him to use. But if we have anything that is still lying around, we could give him a copper ring if we wanted to give him a little more defenses. You have the pickaxe pendant, which has you can master this? Is that yeah, he was the one who was originally using it, actually. So in that case. I think Zack is the only person who has not mastered that ability. We'll throw it on there. Anything else that we figured could potentially go to someone else? We'll make sure that Marduk does still have a shield. We could swap out a copper ring for Zack's ring of agility. I don't know exactly how much agility Zack will need to go first under most circumstances, so it might be worth holding on to that extra agility just in case. We could pay a little bit closer attention taking note of just how much agility some of those speedy bees have and things of that sort. Verify if that is possible for us to remove one agility and still have Zack go first in some circumstances. I think he's still slower than the bees, though. So, as we see here, Dugan has mastered 10%, or er, rather I should say, 10 damage soak. If we unallocate that, though, we could instead throw on minus 20% damage. So here is a circumstance in which we will find ourselves... In, more so in the future, where we're going to start to rack up more of these reactions and skills of various sorts, passives as well, I suppose, and we're only going to have so many reaction points here for us to use, so it's going to come down to deciding which ones we think are most applicable in a given circumstance, and at the moment, I think dam uh, enemies are dealing little enough damage to us that 10 damage soak actually might be better than minus 20% damage, or at least it's pretty close. Long term, when enemies start hitting us harder, then it might make more sense to sw switch back over to minus 20% damage, but that's something to bear in mind. And then we were just saying we want to allocate Insomnia, and he does have just enough reaction points to do that, so that looks great. Um, did we check Hardek? I think we did. Nothing new there. Emila, did we swap anything around for you? We have Magic... What is this? This is offensive magic reactions. Oh, okay, she's mastered both of them. We were originally going for the poison when we had the stone explosion, earth themed rod earlier. As for which one is better at this stage, hard to say definitively. I mean, the poison one does cost more reaction points, so maybe that's an indication that that is actually a little bit stronger, but eh, you could make a case for either one. And we can't quite make it so that Emla can allocate both this magic, or, yeah, magic resistance to fire, and also the resistance to magic in general, just minus 10%. And so for that reason, it might actually be best for us not to put fire pendant on Emla. He doesn't quite have enough reaction points to do both of those things simultaneously. Whereas Zack, at the moment, does not have anything in the way of those magic defense reactions, or passive skill reactions for that matter. So, we were talking about swapping over Ring of Agility for something else on Zack, 
And I think that is reason enough for us to give that a shot. Oh, he doesn't even have enough reaction points for it yet. Now, he will get more reaction points when he levels. It happens, I believe it's once every... It's either two or four levels, characters will get one more reaction point. So presumably, because everyone else has more reaction points than him, sometime, either at level six or level seven, he'll get one more and that'll become an option for us. But... I suppose, yeah, we'll, we'll hold on to it on Zack, just so we don't forget. So let's keep on moving here. And this path is going to be awfully windy. Let's try going here first. Checking out this chest, because we saw it earlier. And it has a remedy, which can remove any status effect. Probably, because it's orange. It's not made of oranges, though, unfortunately. Does that make you cry? I bet it does. As for who ought to have that, I think either Dugan or Zack. Let's put it on Dugan for the time being. And I actually think, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to think of which route makes the most sense to go down first. We'll go down this way. We might, we'll might, probably end up doubling back. Check out the other one first, or as well. We do have a motion potion over here, which cures paralysis. Let's put, I don't know, that one on Zack. The other thing we can do, which we, I don't think we've done yet, is we go down to Zack, we hold S, we can split the stack here. So we originally had three motion potions stacked together like this. We could, theoretically, do this and split them up. Give one to Emila, give one to Dugan. That way, we're a little more diversified there. Don't have to worry about only one person having access to a given item. We'll head down this way. We'll see what we find. More enemies. More of the blade beads. However, we also see a grill. Not a gruel, mind you, a grill. Who heals from fire and is weak to water. So all the more reason for us to swap over back to water aim or water rod, I should say. Grandma. Take that guy out. Presumably we can get him down in one hit for that reason. And this will be the last time we have to use Berserk before Zack masters it. And as you saw there, it will give us a little notification in the top right corner and give us a sound effect as well whenever we use a skill enough to master it. That's your little reminder. And I think we established that these bees have earth resistance. Yeah, they do. So in that case, let's just do a normal attack with Dugan. Will he have enough damage to get this guy down in one hit? Apparently he will. As for Marduk... Let's throw on the magic shield just to get closer to mastering that. We are close. And even getting hit like this is not the end of the world, because of course we do have many defensive reactions if we're looking to master, as we were seeing minutes ago. And a lot of loot from that one. Give some antidote to Zack. It's a potion. So, there you go. Mastered Berserk. And whenever, uh, we've seen this screen before, but whenever we do fully master a skill, then it does show up on this screen as well to give you that confirmation. And that is sort of your indicator that you might want to swap over an item now. Granted, that is Zack's weapon that he's getting that Berserk ability from, and we don't have an alternative at the moment, so he is going to continue to use that, and he has also skill, other skills coming from that weapon that we have not yet mastered. So, uh, let's see. And I remember that we were, we were saying we we're going to check out Soul Strike. But I'm not sure that we actually did. It is a standard attack, but, it, but uh, makes it. But standard attack commands become the element of the user. Okay, so what that means is Zack is air elemental. And so that means that his normal attack, rather than being the generic physical element, is air elemental, which is useful under these circumstances because we're facing a bunch of earth enemies and air is effective against earth. And I, whoa, hold on, going into another fight here. More blade beads, more poisoning, unfortunately. So we have some people that are looking a little bit beat up here. Mostly Zack and Emlo, although Dugan will take a little bit of damage when he takes his turn because he did just get poisoned. If we establish this, it's unlikely to be able to finish off any of the Blade Bees. Now, Zack no longer needs to use the Berserk ability to master it. 
but I think we'll just go for your typical attack. And there you see it is air elemental because we have the soul strike, at least as long as we hit the reaction. And Dugan could use an antidote on his turn here. I suppose we can make that happen. It will, of course, use his turn. That might be the first time we've used an item. So yes, it does take up their turn to do it, which is why, for the most part, I've been opting to use those antidotes outside of battle. And Mardek, this will be the last time he needs to use the magic shield ability to master it, so have that done. That's one of the abilities that he learned from the item that Elwyn gave us, in addition to the plus 10% M1 skill is passive, and I don't think that Marduk has mastered that one yet. So we'll probably continue to have that on Marduk for the time being, although it would be nice to give others the opportunity to learn that skill as well. There you see the M shield. Let's double check real quick to see if Marduk has or has not mastered that ability. Yeah, there you see the plus 10% MP. He's only 2 out of 10 of the way through that. However, he has mastered the M shield. And then, on the map, we will see that, actually, if we go to the left, that blue indicator means that there is a door there. That is, quote-unquote, the correct direction. And this is why I was saying we might want to double back a bit here, is because we don't really want to go there just yet. Because we do have an awesome, awesome piece of treasure here. The reason for that being is because if we take a look at the Snake Stone, is a magical green stone that protects against poison if worn. You saw how often we were getting poison there. The item does give one magic defense, not great, but 100% resistance to poison, which is awesome. Also gives the antibody ability, which is a passive ability that also makes you 100% resistant to poison. And remove taint, which is another ability for Mardek, which will remove some status effects. So, we won't need to be as reliant on using those antidotes, and we were holding on to the Silver Pendant on Mardek, mostly for some pretty strong magic defense and some light resistance. Those things haven't been terribly relevant thus far. However, if we take a look at Mardek's abilities here. Let's see, can he also do antibody? He cannot. He does not have enough reaction points to do plus 10% MP and antibody. I think we will still keep both of these items on Mardek for the time being, both of his accessories here, the Snake Stone and the Lapis Lily, because we're working on plus 10% MP from Lapis Lily, and we're working on Remove Taint. Not antibody yet on Mardek, but eventually, once we do Master plus 10% MP, which should be pretty quick, then we'll swap over, give it to someone else, and Mardek can focus on antibody from there on out. So, that's big. Also, if we take a look at the map, you'll see there's plenty of other stuff going on over this route. The right side. Let's make sure we check that out as well before we carry on. Lots of blade bees. I mean, in some, in some ways, it's not great that we're fighting them so often because they are quick and therefore they are managing to get hits on us, but at the same time, that does also mean we have the opportunity to get a lot of those defensive reactions or some practice, because earlier we were finding that Emla was basically taking down enemies before they could actually hang on with one HP. Emla was taking down enemies before they could actually hit us, which meant we had very little practice with our defensive reactions. So we didn't get the chance to go through many of them and master them. It was a little unfortunate. But this is an opportunity to play a little bit of catch-up here. And that, I suppose, brings me to a bit of a question that I had. Oh, actually, missed that reaction, unfortunately. Which is... I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments what you guys think as to whether or not you would like me to do any grinding. Oh, we have... Emla is currently poisoned, and we could actually oops, use... Remove Taint, which is also, I believe, an ability we can use outside of battle or in battle. Removes the poison effect. Gives Mardek one out of five uses that he needs to master it. And I lost my train of thought a little bit there. Oh, I was going to say, do you think that you would like for us to also have videos of us just going around and 
fighting some enemies and doing a little bit of leveling up our skills and characters and whatnot, or we only want to do videos for when we are actively progressing the storyline. So let me know, because if we are fighting enemies all the way through, you know, we're never skipping or fleeing from fights, then we shouldn't need to do too much of that, but as we get more and more access to more and more skills and items and abilities, then it's going to become more of an option for us to, instead of going straight forward into the next mission, focus more on powering ourselves up. And so this is our first time running into balloons. Let's take a look at them. They're a plantoid. They have a lot of spirit and okay agility. Very little strength or vitality, although their life is still very high. Lots of magic defense. They have... They actually heal from earth damage, take a lot of air damage, are relatively weak to fire, and have a small resistance to water. They're completely resistant to poison, and several other status effects here. Which means... This looks like it is lightning bolt block. But given their strong magic defense, despite their weakness to air, still not enough to take them out altogether. So... Let's use Zack here. He does have the air elemental attack, which is strong against them, because they don't have as strong physical defense. However, still not enough to take him out altogether, and therefore, I mean, you'd like to have Dugan not overkill the enemy like this, but I think getting one of them out of the picture is helpful. And here we see, yeah, they are actually spellcasters. And relatively strong spellcasters at that. These are probably the strongest enemies that we've run into thus far. And now, let's see, we definitely have some people who could use a bit of healing here. As for whether we ought to pick Emla or Zack next, take your pick. Fortunately, Bardock has more than enough capability to fully restore their HP. Emla, if we target just one of them, how much damage are we talking? More, for sure. Still not enough to finish them off. Can Zack do enough damage there? No, not quite. Okay, let's go with Dugan over here. And then one more acid ability there. Deals earth damage. And it is, of course, a spell, so it's testing our magic defense. Reduces magic defense, which makes us more vulnerable to future attacks. And then Marduk could opt to heal again here, or finish off the balloon. Let's go that route. Drop some of that for Zack, and Balloon Juice, I believe, if I remember correctly, is the type of potion that relieves numbness. We've not yet seen that status effect, or at least has not been applied to us at all. Can also use the heal. Heal up Dugan and Emma here outside of combat. Marduk arguably could use it, but we'll pass for now. And actually, let me double check for a second here. I think we might even be able to... Okay, no. <laughs> it does not let you use Remove Taint if you do not currently have a status effect that you can remove with it. So I was wondering if maybe we could just blow through four rounds of it and immediately master the skill. Unfortunately, not the case. However, it only requires five uses, so it should be pretty quick. And it removes poison, blindness, curses, and zombification, which is not every status effect, but it is some of the most common ones, including, for sure, poison, as we've been seeing. As for where we ought to go here, Here's, there's a chest to the left. Let's check this out. Bronze shield, that is the more powerful of the two kinds of shields that we found thus far, which does mean we could swap it out for the wooden shield that Marduk is currently using and up his defense just a bit. So not bad. Here's, oh, another fight here. Which is all the more reason, okay, we were talking earlier about how we had the most difficult fight yet. This might take the cake though, because we saw the Mantids back in the gem mine. And fortunately, at that point in time, we were only fighting one at a time, and they were slow enough that we could attack first. This time, they're quick enough to attack first, and there are two of them. Let's take a closer look. They have a lot of strength, a lot of vitality. You saw they dealt a fair bit of damage there. They are weak to air, and somewhat weak to fire, resistant to earth. So let's see what we can do here. We're going the air route. If we want to try to take one out at a time, that might be the way to go. I'm not sure that splitting damage is going to do us much here. We did apply poison, because we have that poison reaction with Emla, even though we're not using the earth-based 
spell, it is still possible to do that. I think if we had split the damage between the two, we might not have been able to take one of them out this turn. That's why I decided to do that. And I think Zack will be able to finish them off if he hits, which he did not. As for whether Dugan can pull it off without a power attack, I'm not sure. We might need to use a power attack, so let's give it a shot. However, there was that risk as well. And Mardek... Uh, I don't think you're going to have enough damage. You're not one of our stronger hitters. That guy was poisoned. Oh man, I'm missing all the reactions. Now, all the reactions. Now I'm thinking to myself. Hit in my own head. Should definitely have enough power to get this guy down. I think we'll leave it to someone else with a little less damage to do that, though. Better to focus on dealing the brunt of the damage to the one that has not yet been hit. And as for whether Mardek should be the one to take the weak one out, I think that is probably the case because Mardek deals the least damage. And so we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but Emila, as we know, is the primary source of our damage. Or at least our can hit multiple people with a high amount of damage. However, she is pretty weak if she does take damage for herself. Mardek is, of course, the support character with the heal and magic defense, removing status effects. He can deal a little bit of damage himself, but that's not really his primary role here. Zack has strong normal attacks, however, does not have access to many other special abilities, as we've seen with his Berserk skill can become enraged and get more powerful. However, he becomes uncontrollable. So it's mostly just his normal attack getting stronger under those circumstances. And then Dugan is a little bit versatile. He's a little bit of a jack of all trades. He generally will only be damaging one enemy at a time. However, as we've started to see... Okay. Take note of that. We'll double back for it. Well very far in the future. But yeah, so Dugan has access to... Ooh, and Emla has used all of her MP precisely. She does have a water elemental staff. Or rod, I should say. So we'll deliberately attack the fire enemy here and deal a little bit more damage and leech a little more MP that way. Here's the Berserk ability I was referring to before. Doubling his strength but becoming impossible to control. His normal attack does become strong. Actually, who is the strongest or best enemy for us to attack here? These guys have a little bit of air resistance. The grill has none, so I guess it's actually the grill. Now, let's get our reactions. But yeah, so Dugan has Spellbladery, which at the moment is limited to just a power attack and an Earth Slash. But Dugan will become a little bit of a jack of all trades, like I was saying. Getting a chance to, over time, learn many different ways to imbue his sword with different powers. And he's not quite as tanky as, say, Marduk, who I believe is actually the tankiest. But he's a middle ground there as well. So again, makes him well-rounded. And Emla can use her magic abilities now, but let's take this opportunity to leap a little bit more because... That grill is a good target for that. And I'm not sure if we're going to finish him off here. Yes, we will. Okay, well done, Zack. And then Dugan will have to use his normal attack here. May not have enough damage. He does. And actually, levels up in the process. Marduk can use a little bit of healing here. So we'll do that. Our skills. Not bad. Marduk is looking very bad on MP at the moment. And he does not have the ability to leech the same way that Emla does. That is something that is unique to those rods that Emla uses. So that means we're going to have to get a little more aggressive with either our, um, our items. Oh, and we got a hat. It's useful. Our items like our antidotes or potions, which we've not really gotten the chance to, or have not needed to use very much thus far. The hat is meaningful because it gives one defense, which is the same as the helmets. However, Emla can wear the hats. However, she cannot wear the helmets. So that is a nice way to give Emla a little bit more defense. And all the more reason for holding off a little bit. If you're wondering why I did not purchase all the things from the shops when we first saw them, there will generally be the opportunity to pick up a lot of those things. 
along the way on our journey. I think I'm going to take this opportunity again. And save a little bit of coins along the way. Granted, you could still make the case that you know, if you do buy them from the shops immediately, then it gives you more time to master whatever abilities those items may give you. Under this circumstance, the hat doesn't give any abilities, so it wasn't relevant here, but if there is something that's clearly a major upgrade, then it might still make sense to purchase it immediately, even if you suspect that there is a chance that it might show up sometime in the future. Pamela is also very damaged at the moment, which is a bit of a problem because, like I was saying before, Marduk does not have much MP removal, does not have enough to heal. But we've certainly done our fair share of accumulating potions, so that should not be too much of an issue. We just drop one of these, and that gets her back in good shape. And so let's work our way around here in this somewhat hidden area, and this is the reason why I do it a lot, but it is very worthwhile to check your map, especially when you are entering a new area. You see right now that we have done all, or have found all of the chests. However, there's clearly something over here in this roundabout route, and what might be there? We'll just have to see. If you don't check your map, then you might miss something like that. And again, lots of defensive reaction opportunities here. Start getting some experience there, and this is the first time I believe we've seen the poison bee. We've seen many blade bees. These guys are similar. They have, however, lots of air weakness and lots of fire weakness, whereas the blade bees have a little bit of air resistance, so a little bit of a difference there. It does mean that Lightning Bolt is more effective against these guys. Should be able to take him out very comfortably with one hit there. Zack did get poisoned, however. And remember, he does have Soul Strike Air, which means if we get the reaction, he will make his attack air elemental and therefore actually probably deals less damage if we do actually land the reaction. I'll do it anyway because it does give us experience on that reaction we do still need to master it. But technically speaking, short term, it is more beneficial under this circumstance to wait. Marduk doesn't have enough MP to use Remove Taint on Zack either. However, he can level up to get him a little bit closer. 5 MP? Is that exactly how much he needed? It might have been. We did, of course, pick up some antidotes as well. Let's just double check, though, because Marduk does need to master that ability. And can now use it, so very nice. Carry on here. And Marduk and Dugan have leveled up, so it is potentially worth double checking if they have access to new abilities because they might have gained one MP, or one RP, I should say. They now have seven apiece. They might have had six earlier. Is that going to be a difference maker? Not quite. Marduk would need one more before it makes a big difference for him. Dugan, however, it does make a difference. It is now allowing him to also equip the minus 20% damage physical reaction. And then there is a save crystal in here, which will heal us, which is fantastic, because like we were saying before, we were running out of MP and starting to have to resort to using some items. And we get the Fire Rod here. So this is another item that I believe was shown up the shop and back way in, uh, let's see, the Eastern Glens, when we ran into a chest there, I was expecting for us to find the Fire Rod there. However, it had since been swapped. This used to be the location of... The Earth Rod. However, it got swapped with the Fire Rod. And under these circumstances, we can very much use the fire rod here, just like we were saying. Earth rod, not terribly meaningful in the location where we're running into mostly earth enemies. And it does give Emla access to the new flame ability. So we'll have that to look forward to, but I think this is a good place for us to wrap up here. So, I'll catch you in the next one.